Hanging Jamie Aston and um, you know, it seems like there's always something that uh, brings me back to you all in the YouTube videos and then next thing you know, something happens and I go on a hiatus. This time I told you all what happened. Um, I lost my dog, Bree. You know, it's been just a little over a month. Um, it's been really hard. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I've lost people. You know, but they were somewhat expected or, or something, even unexpected. But I tell you all, just losing my little baby girl was extremely hard. So um, I'm trying to get back into things. I still reply to you all's comments and everything, but it's just been so hard to uh, edit the videos because a lot of my videos have her in it. So um, I want to go ahead and just get right back started. We had a lot. We have a lot of things going on, or had a lot of things going on. I uh, just came back from Arkansas. That was actually a trip Bree was supposed to be on there, you know, be with me on. Uh, we've been kayak fishing. I got a new kayak. I just bought a second kayak in Arkansas, so you all look forward to that. Um, let's see. Uh, it's hunting season in California right now, so I've been um, in the mountains doing some uh, bow hunting. And uh, this weekend was the start of gun season, so um, you know I have a ton of uh, my hunting gear out because uh, we've been hunting. But the thing is, it's it's really hot in California <laughs> right now. You know, and it's gonna be the hottest week for the opening of Zone A gun season, and um, it is gonna be a hundred some degrees. It's already too hot to hunt deer here in the summer. And this week is gonna be even hotter, so I'm gonna try to see if I can't get out this Saturday. It's gonna be a cooler day, so I'm gonna go out there Friday night and stay. Um, got a lot of updates to, to do, but one of the questions that I got from uh, somebody said, hey, you know, you got the video up about the LJ, you were selling it. What did you ultimately do with that uh, LJ Cruiser? And I sold it, people. I sold it and it was a hard decision. I almost still kind of regret it just a little bit, but uh, I wanted the truck and now I'm like, I should have maybe got the Jeep uh, Gladiator, but this is what I got. We got this uh, Chevy Silverado. I got 2018, uh, three months ago, and um, I got a really, really good deal on it. Um, it's loaded. It is a double cab, uh, red line edition. Uh, since I don't have a back storage, I end up putting a toolbox on the back of it. It's a UWS uh, toolbox. Got it off Craigslist for 100 bucks, So that was actually a really, really good deal to get that. Uh, you see the red accents. It's um, a red line edition. And um, I guess one of the main reasons why I'm recording right now is I washed it yesterday. This thing hasn't been washed. It hasn't been washed since Bree passed away because that was the first I did that. Just trying to get away. So, um, but this thing stays dirty because I've been all over the place. So uh, I just want to give you all a tour. That's what I was asked to give. Uh, this is a uh, V8, 5.3 V8. Now I did not clean the inside up. And, and here's the deal, people. I, I, when I bought this truck, I was, you know, I had my dog in mind because she's my road dog. She was with me everywhere we went. So this was her seat right here, and that's why that bed is there. I just haven't been able to, to move it. Um, you know, when we would come back from fishing late at night, she would be in that little bed. And when we were going fishing, she would be right there. That, that was her seat. Um, like I said, it was just mainly me and Bree. You know, we still got the little dog medi kit back there. Got my medi kit because <laughs> could be accent prone. <laughs> you know, but uh, it's just usually us. So I didn't worry about getting like a big truck to fit everybody else in. I was on more so a larger, you know, bed so I can throw my kayaks and everything else in there. Um, one thing we did was we went ahead and put some lights on the back right there. So when I'm back in the boat, down the uh, ramp or getting that night I can light up the place and um, this thing uh, is fairly loaded uh -oh. 
has remote start, things like that on here. Uh, this one does have the uh, navigation package. It has Android, Apple, CarPlay, all of that good stuff. Still says FJ Music. <laughs> you know, things like that. It's, you know, it's it, it works. It's it's a it's been good to me. You know, I've already put almost 4,000 miles on it. I haven't integrated my button yet for my rear lights. Let me put a light bar or something on the back. I mean, on the front of it so I can see. And, um, you know, it, 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 you know, it's a truck. I, I don't really uh, have much to say past that. We, we did add some more bed lights in the back of it. So I'm always out at night, right? Um, that's not. Let's see here. It does what I need to do. And, um, you know, it was getting decided on that truck. I had spent a lot of time with that Dodge Ram. And um, even when I was in Arkansas this past couple of weeks, I ran a Dodge Ram Rebel and fell in love with Ram again. I mean, right now, those new Rams drive crazy they drive not uh, not like a truck period you know you get all the truck capabilities but it doesn't drive like a truck that Chevy drives like a truck <laughs> in fact uh, uh, I guess you know you just blame California you know I was driving on 580 when I first got that truck and um, I ended up going over some bad roads and all this type of stuff and it put me in a hospital. <laughs> that, it took three days. My back just started hurting worse and worse. And I started getting less and less moving until I couldn't walk. So if some of you all see me on Instagram, post a picture, yeah, I'm back in the ER, can't walk, you know. It was that truck suspension. I'm not used to a truck suspension. It's my first pickup truck. Uh, the FJ drove exceptionally well, things like that. So I'm used to it now. It's definitely tamed down, you know, putting almost 4,000 miles on it. So, um, that's what we got, 2018 Chevy Silverado. Uh, I'm happy with it. Almost, uh, you all still follow me on Instagram. <laughs> I was at the Dodge dealership earlier in the week because why? I was like, you know what? I might sell that thing and go get a Dodge. And then I fell in love with the Gladiator. So, decisions, decisions, you know. That's what I really, that would have been the best trade-in for the FJ Cruiser to get the Gladiator because all I wanted was an off-road vehicle with a bed. And that was the Gladiator. And yes, I knew the Gladiator was coming. Everyone's been watching that thing for a couple of years or more. And I knew it was coming, you know, next month or so. But I told myself, like, now nah, let's just get a pickup truck. But, you know, I'm happy with it. So let's go on back to um, fishing and uh, hunting and stuff like that. Yeah, because right now people it's crazy because what's on my mind these days I mean I, I was fishing when, when Bree was with me we were fishing you all haven't seen all those videos we were fishing probably about four times a week at night you know we were running out there and catching crappie and, and bass and everything what's up Ohio and um, you know it, it was a fun time when Bree passed away, I went into a rut, a little depression. Um, you know, and I didn't do anything. We didn't have the motivation to really even leave the home. Uh, but we kept on going. You gotta keep on going. So um, we, we did what we could. And um, so what's gotten me back out was hunting. I've only fished, I don't know, three or four times since I, you know, maybe five times since I lost Bree. But I've been in the woods hunting more, and, and that's what's on my mind right now. Um, so uh, that's that's been a fun experience. I'm trying to learn out here in California. A lot of people, you know, it's hard out here in California um, if you don't have access to private land. And it still might be a little tough, but you do. But um, it starts so early, it's so warm. Uh, a lot of regulation, copper-only bullets, uh, you know, bugs, things like that. And it's because the blacktail uh, in this area, they're just not as plentiful. You 
know, in Arkansas, we can hunt, you know, during the rut and everything like that. So I am a member of my hunt club, the family's hunt club back in Arkansas. So you all stay tuned to get some videos of us busting some bucks out there, hopefully. And, uh, but I am trying, I like a challenge. So hunting out here in California in these mountains and it's heat, you know, I want to be able to say that yes, I did it. Yes, I did a stalk and hunt. Yes, you know, um, I just didn't sit up in a stand and, and wait for them to come with, you know, corn and, and greens and everything planted. You know, yeah, we have a plot back home. They should be there. The deer will spot them, you know, we'll be watching them, things like that, and we should be able to get one. Here, I've only done just a little bit of scouting. Uh, one of the things I did do, I set my mountain bike up, or I'm still setting it up. I just bought some camo tape so I can go uh, hunting on it. Uh, these are some slime uh, tubes because the last time I was out there scouting around the thorns and everything out there, I went ahead and put a flat. So um, we are bow hunting. Um, I have a couple of bows. And uh, right now, since it's gun season, I'm gonna be taking my gun. I really thought I would take, uh, it would be nice to take, you know, California, these uh, black tails, they're a little smaller, so it's gonna be nice to use the 243. But since you have to use copper only bullets, the best I can do reloading a copper only 243 is uh, I think 85 grains. You know, that's just not, uh, it's not, it's, I don't know if it's ethically, ethically heavy enough <laughs> to take a deer, a deer. So I'll probably take the 30 out six and we'll reload that with a super heavy bullet or maybe I'll just need to go buy a real light bullet for the two, uh, for the 30 out six. And, um, yeah, we can, we'll go light because right now I'm, I have some 168 grain and things like that. So that'd be too big for some of these white tail. But those are going to be perfect for it back home. You know. Um, so yeah, we, we got a lot of new gear. But I want to show you all something. It's been tough. And Friday I made a decision. I made a decision Friday. So here's another upgrade. Uh, there's a whole lot of gear we can talk about. There's a ton of gear that we have that we can talk about. But we did something. And uh, let's see. Let's see if we can see it. Baby. This little girl right here. Meet baby. Just got her Friday. Uh, we are worried that she may have had a little abuse in her life before us. She's 10 months old. She's a little skittish, but she's in the right home. She'll be spoiled. She'll be well loved, taken care of. So we're just building her confidence up. You know, She is a Papillon mixed with Pomeranian. Brie was a Pomeranian mix of rat terrier, so she's not as feisty as Brie was. I don't know if she'll be going fishing with me or not yet, but you know, we we wanted to love something and and she needed love. And so it was a perfect match. It was a perfect match for us. It's still kind of hard. <laughs> I keep on almost calling her Brie and I almost doing things like that but look at this little girl you know, she's she's pretty doggone awesome all right say bye <laughs> she's pretty doggone awesome so uh the smile is back <laughs> Definitely miss my breezy. See, the thing is with breezy, I could be out here working in the garage or fishing or anything. Bree would always, she was so protective. Uh, and that's all I needed from her. She don't need to bite anyone or do anything like that. She just let me know that someone's around. And that's what she did. She was always very aware. We'd be on the fishing boat at night and uh, she would, you know, another person was walking in the woods or anything like that or animal or if another boat started getting too close grr, or 
if I start drifting toward a tree or the rocks or anything like that, she would go to start growling. Because, you know, when I'm fishing, I'm in the zone. I'm not paying attention to anything. But she would be my back. So, I mean, that, that was nice having three. So, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm thinking about maybe getting another dog. We might get one bigger. Uh, we lost Bree. It was just a tragedy. I'm sorry I don't have much up there. I keep talking about Bree, you know, but uh, that little dog, man, that little girl, you know, she changed my life. She, um, for some of the muddy details, for some of you all that got in the car accident, things like that, that's what started messing up my back. Ultimately, I need to have to get back surgery and things like that. Before the back surgery, I got Bree. And during that time, I couldn't fish, I couldn't bike, I couldn't do anything, I started gaining a lot of weight, all this type of stuff. Bree became my focus. And uh, she was just a little baby little girl. And uh, so with her, I started doing things, I started by getting a little more active, even though I was very limited. Um, so she saw me through all of that type of stuff. You know, and now I'm feeling a lot better and everything. Bree was just my little angel, you know. And her name, Bree, comes from what? My favorite fish. When I saw her, she was just a little tiny little thing. And I said, she looks like a little brim. She reminds me of a brim. So uh, I named her Bree, short for brim. You know, a bluegill, sunfish, all that type of stuff. Um, so we, we, we received her ashes back last week. That was really hard, you know. And uh, I still haven't put my little memorial up for her or anything. We're gonna get to it, you know. I can I can talk about her now and, and laugh and things like that. So, anywho, I'm about to uh, cut some videos. So we're gonna be talking about a few things we got here. We got a review coming up for a new kayak. It's the Lifetime Teeson. You can get that thing at Dick's Sporting Goods for about three fifty. Try to wait around for a coupon. I end up buying it. I bought it for three fifty when I got to Little Rock, Arkansas, and then like that night. The next day, a coupon came out online for 20% off, which made that thing $280. The Lifetime Teeson uh, Kayak is like our Tamarack Kayak, but it actually has a seat in it. So it has a platform seat, good on my back. It's a slow kayak, though. Fighting that thing up river, you'll see in my review, but it was a very stable kayak. So um, it's nice to have it. Um, got a lot of hunting gear to talk about and review. Live scope is still doing good. I think I told you all I was having a lot of issues with it previously. Um, I contacted Garmin. They know I've been talking to them since March. They sent me a brand new GBC 10 unit out. No more issues. So it wasn't the transducer, it was the computer, the GBC 10 that was causing issues. So if you're having any issues with your live scope setup, it's probably the GBC 10 get that thing replaced all your life scope woes go away so yeah you know I appreciate you all always watching always leave a comment you know questions anything I definitely try to ask I have a person just replied to one of my videos earlier asking me about a Garmin 3210 I don't have that unit <laughs> but he needs to do a software update on it he wants to know if there's any way to, to start um, updated it. He gave me his email address in the comments. Don't do that. Anyone can get it. So you can send me a PM, a private message. If you want me to do that, or you can email me. But um, I think it's youtube.jamieaspen at outlook.com. Um, so, and it's you, the letter U to dot jamieaspen at outlook.com. But anywho, I just instantly started researching and I start. I think I found a method for it. I can be a little nerd. That's what I do for a profession. So um, I'm gonna try to see if we can't find a solution for him, even if I call Garmin. Just because now I'm interested, can we do it? There has to be a way, and I know we can do it. So um, I just always try to answer your questions. I really do. We got a contest coming up. Fast Tracker, love it. Just put a Helix Seven in. Yeah. Ohio, yeah. I like those classics. Have you all seen that new one? Um, they just got, you know, Bass Pro, Johnny Morris, he, I don't know how well they were doing. Previously when I looked at their boats, they had like, um, 
think the maybe the pinfish or the pro 16 was the cheapest one you could get for about thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred dollars. And I was like, eh, okay, let's see. They bring out the heritage. Then they start, you know, with the classic the next year. Now they have the classic that's painted. You know, so this classic line is not going away. And it's a solid boat. I like mine. You know, uh, I like I like the old colors, the brown, the orange, and things like that. It's cool. But I won't lie. I love that gray on the classic. Uh, the carpet even feels better on the classic to me. Every time I've seen the classic, put my hands on it in comparison to all the heritages I've seen with the brown carpet, that carpet is different. Um, classic might even be cooler. <laughs> carpet you know since it's a lighter color and things like that but these are solid boats I don't have anything I can say bad about it you know some people on the forums bassresource.com um, always looking at size and things like that and um, you know one of the bow isn't big enough I don't fish with it you know we've had three people on the boat and you can fish I mean you want to be careful a little more careful when you're casting out things like that but the majority of the time, I do. I'm just by myself. But the benefit of that new one with the paint is what? That paint, your boat isn't gonna tarnish. The aluminum starts to tarnish. And uh, we have to go through, I have a video up putting some elbow grease to get that thing shiny. And you go on three or four more trips and it's gonna be back, you know, with a little water line on it. Mine has a water line on it right now. I really don't care because I'm fishing. I. It was, it was cool to save the money without having it painted, and I don't mind that. But that painted boat has a lot of benefits. It's easier to wash. You go through, it gets dirty, regular soap and water, it's clean, shined up, and you're looking good on the water again. So, um, you know, I think it costs a little bit more. You have more options now. You can put it, the 50 pound horsepower motor on it optionally or you can stay with the 40 with the classic they didn't even give you an option with the 40 they just gave you a 50. Uh, with the heritage it would have been nice you know if i'm topping out at 33 the 50 has to be pushing some of you classic ohio what's your top speed you know you gotta be good in 35 38 you know it's the same boat same weight so it should be pushing a little bit more than me if i can top out at 33 and that's with all the conditions right gotta get the trim right do everything else i maybe we get 33 but uh i did find the perfect placement for my fish finders on the boat where um i um i can read i can read the bottom with the fish finders going 21 miles an hour um and that's just before we were on plane once we we're like at top speed if i'm if everything's still good and i'm running at that uh top speed then um you know i can read at about 31 miles an hour too still reading the bottom as long as everything's good um live scope how's it going let's go ahead and pull the cover back on this boat let's uh let's talk about some stuff i got a little more motivated <laughs> let's look at this those are my flow tubes i'm actually getting ready dang 40 miles is awesome ohio that's awesome that's awesome but though I got a couple of flow tubes. I'm getting ready. I love to flow tube in the fall. I love it. So let's see here. We do have an update on here. We do have an update. So I'm pulling a new fish finder. Still have the crappy one that came with it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't catch your name, but that, <laughs> it's a fish finder, it works, but I mean, my lord, I hate it. I haven't even put it on my kayak, so I'd rather use my black and white garment than use that one that came on it, on this boat. It, it, Lorraine should really be ashamed of that thing, but it works, don't get me wrong. You find fish, you find fish. So uh, before we get to the live scope question, one of the things I did was, um. I changed out my um, fish finder mounts to these Scotty fish finder mounts. Bass Pro Shops has them for I think 30 bucks. And I originally were, I was using the rim mounts 
But I changed out to these Scotty ones. They're uh, nylon, they're extremely strong, durable. They work really, really well. I put one there. Still like the trolling motor recess. Oh, yes. And we put one there. Uh, with this recess trolling motor tray, uh, and it's a very easy job. Um, if you all haven't done it, I recommend you do this. Let this be your first modification. To the person who didn't upgrade his fish finder, don't worry. Do this first. You will be happy. You will be happy with this. I guarantee it. Um, it's an easy job. Let's see if we can't pull it up. I put this little tray. This is a Kydex sheet that you make gun holsters and stuff like that. You can use anything. It's just what I had laying around. Put this little cup holder tray. I mainly use it for lures and stuff in and, and my drink when I'm uh, fishing. I have this thing tethered down. I don't have mine screwed down because... Let's see here. I'm just trying to show you all the holes. I'm going through more work than necessary. Oh, shoot. There it is. That's the hardest job, digging out that phone. That's the hardest job. This is easy. As you all see, it's about one inch from that lip with that recess tray right there. Just one. You don't really have to worry about cutting the wires, but when you get to the front, just take your time. You know, they're, they are glued in. Some people might have the wires way back here. I'm not sure. Hopefully Tracker, tracker always tried to push them to the back. So, with the live scope, how's it going? Live scope was giving me the blues, people. And I'll tell you, there's an update for it too. We can see if we can update it. Hold on, I'm gonna hook it up. I'll hook up one for you. Oh, okay. Live scope was giving me the blues. You know, Garmin, and that's a lot of money to be putting in. I got two of these units. Not only did I get two of these uh, fish finders, I got the live scope. And then I bought a, um, I have two modules on here. And that's because I have the uh, UHD uh, fish finder, um, ultra high definition unit, and then I have the live scope unit. And, um, when it came to the live scope, every time I would turn the unit on, start the fish, it would say live scope is not connected. Transducer not connected. Transducer unsupported. All this type of crap. It's like, you don't need to be paying, you know, that kind of money for this thing not to work. Contacted Garmin a couple of times. Have you got the latest update? Yes, I got the latest updates. All of this type of stuff. So finally I said, okay, let's replace their GVC-10. And a different form I read, someone had their transducer replaced. That transducer cable is run, <laughs> it's run all the way around the boat. And honestly, I regretted it. It's like, oh my goodness, if I have to get that thing replaced, it's gonna take me more time and work. But um, I said, well, let's just try the GVC-10 first. That seems to be helping other people. We replaced the GVC-10 and we just powered this unit on, let's see. Hopefully when I click here, it should have an ugly image. Yes, it would not do this. Now this is doing this because the transducer isn't in any water, but previous to replacing my GVC-10, it would just uh, complain the transducer not supported, things like that. Um, I have some people, there was a, a question on Bass Resource not too long ago. They said, how do you, is a touch screen on the fish finder working? I have a lot of fish finders that are not touchscreen, and I love them. They work. Before I upgrade to this one, touchscreen is not a benefit that I'm going to say I just have to have. But I have to say, <laughs> Garmin designed this touchscreen so well until, you know, it's been just really easy for me to use. Um, even though I have buttons, I haven't even mapped anything over here to these buttons just yet. Let's look. Some of you all know I have replaced my fish finder a few times. You have the one that came on the boat. I replaced, I had a round mount, which had different hole patterns. I'm now using a Scotty mount. Yes. Okay. I have a Scotty mount and um, things like that. So we've had three different setups on here. 
What I did was I plastic welded my deck back. It's not the best job, but instead of having any holes, I did some plastic welding. Underneath here, we have these uh, screws going down to a nut, but it has a larger washer. You can still see LK out the front with that fish finder while driving. Yeah, I can. I'm sitting in the seat right now. I still have all of this. And a lot of times, I'm, if I'm trying to duck from the wind or water spray or anything like that, I might, you know, kneel down a little bit. But for the most part, I'm usually up high anyhow. I'm not that tall, but I look over it naturally. Um, but that was one of the benefits that I have with this, though, is that... You know, let's see if we can demo it. Um, I can move this thing around and my wife and I, we tested this thing before because uh, with live scope, you might want to share it with a friend. So um, I made this where we can move it anywhere like that or I could move it either way. And if it was for the most part, I have not had any type of an issue with being able to safely uh, captain this boat all that good stuff. Let's see here. There we go. So yeah, um, if you notice a little switch right here, um, I haven't had a chance to finish working on the boat. Uh, I did all this and then All right, so we put this little pump in here right here so that way it's really what the project really is for is that I plan on extending my deck probably just to write you know that line and when I extend the deck I'm probably going to be putting a larger live well in here I did a tournament there's another one coming up in September I'm thinking about getting into but um I did a tournament and I caught some bass <laughs> get out of my boat <laughs> Hey, man, you need to let me know, man. I want to catch those stripers with you. Uh, but I did a fishing tournament one time, and, you know, the, the, that live well just isn't that big. And so I really want to, I got some, some points knocked off because uh, a couple of the bass, one of them was really sick about to die, and one of them did die. And I did everything. I put G-Juice in there, iced it, everything I could. So um, I think I want to put a bigger one to... Uh, hopefully keep the fish alive so that's really what this project is for it's just in there for now what i'm thinking about doing is turning this into a storage all right hey i'm looking forward to it man i'll probably turn this into storage people this is really easy i, I you all know i'm not afraid to strip my boat apart these are just put down by rivets you can drill this out take this layer out and then this is just a tub right here Underneath here is a wood floor and a hole, you know, because I've used it to run wires and things like that. Um, but it's, it's a very easy boat to uh, modify. Let's see what we have here. Uh, we don't have what I thought, I can't see it. So anywho, my dinner is getting cold. Do I have any other questions? I need to make an update to my dining room. Tell you all what, if anyone out here hunting. <laughs> I'm willing to do this. And this is the honest truth. You look up zone 12 in Arkansas. Zone 12. It's a really hot zone for deer. For white tail. For uh, big white tail deer. And uh, that's where I have a lot of access to. We do some horse trading for some for some tips and everything out here in California. Come back with me to Arkansas and I'll put you on some good spots. <laughs> that's, that's for real. That is for real. At this point, I think I told you all in one of my last videos. I really want to do that. You know, Hook'em Heavy said we're going to go striper fishing. We're going to go striper fishing. Um, I'm going fishing with a few of you all out there. You know, uh, Going with Mike, we haven't got the video out there. We went down to the Delta. Um, 
So I definitely want to start to see if maybe we can get some fishing going on when we go out of state as well. So uh, all of this is a weekend. You know, we can do something, set something up, and have a good time. So anyway, that's a quick update. Stay tuned. I got some videos coming for some gear and some fishing. So uh, we're coming back at it. So I hope you all are all doing well. And uh, never ever do not regret the time you have with your friends and your family. Every day, every time is a gift. I know you know that, but it's serious. You just never know. So make the best of all those times. Thank you all for watching. If you have any comments, just leave them out there. I'll, I'll get back to them whenever I can. And uh, you all have a good night. See you next time. If we can turn it off.